Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome to a video I've been wanting to make for quite some time. This is my comparison between a Rook 2020 Mark II and a Voron 0.2. I want to just get this kind of out there. This isn't a versus video. I'm not determining in this video which printer is better. Um, there is no such thing. These have pros and cons to both of them. And I just want to go over some of the details so that people can choose the printer that's right for them. Only you can make up the decision on which printer you want to build. Um, in my opinion, just build both of them because they both are awesome printers. So I've jotted some notes down here, so hopefully I don't forget kind of the major points that I want to talk about. But basically, where I'm going to start off is I'm going to start off by talking about price. So this is going to be a little bit of a interesting topic because it very heavily depends on where you live. I can't stress this enough. Um, I get a lot of comments from people on, you know, especially like a Voron 0.2. I think people were buying these for like $180 US for a kit on AliExpress, like an insane deal. Um, that's an incredible price, but that's if you live in the US. I cannot get a Voron 0.2 for less than $560 Canadian, which is around 400, 415 US. There's, there's nothing cheaper than that. That's a Cyborg uh, kit on AliExpress. This particular printer is an LDO kit, um, but again, generally, if you're in Canada or other countries, the Voron 0.2 is gonna be much more expensive than what you can find in the US, so please uh, note that as well. So essentially, how it breaks down for Canadian dollars, if you self-source a Rook 2020, generally, this is around $440 Canadian, okay? The V0.2, like I said, it's around $560 Canadian. So there's about a $100 difference. Now, you can break that out in a couple of little different ways and you know change a few things on the Rook 2020. The big benefit to the Rook 2020 is that it you can self-source this printer cheaper. Probably the biggest pro to this printer is a lot of the parts are in other printers. So you have an old Ender lying around, you have an old Anet A8 lying around, you have spare motors, you can greatly reduce the cost of this printer. This uses more standard components, NEMA 17s, um, you know, that type of thing. So if you just had the motors from an old printer, that can take $50 Canadian off the price of this printer. Um, a big one too, and what I generally designed the Rook for was a non-heated bed. So if you just used a piece of glass, like a $6 piece of glass, borosilicate glass or whatever, and some Biltac, that's another $50 Canadian off the price of this. So we've already lowered the price of the Rook 2020 by $100. We're just printing PLA on this printer. That's what this printer is designed for. So I always had intended the printer to be without a heated bed. So there's $100 off. You can definitely build this printer for under $300 Canadian if you're making those exceptions to the printer. So I just kind of want to touch on that. There, there's definitely very big differences with pricing depending on how you're building the printer and where you live is a big, big thing. So. That's for uh, price there. Um, these do use the same V0 heated bed. If you're building a kit, like Fabrico sells kits and um, West3D sells Rook kits that can be converted into a Rook 2020. So that would use a V0 bed and that type of thing. Generally, um, a Fabrico kit for this, I think they have it on sale for about $299 US for the Rook and then you add on the frame, the extra frame for another $30 US. So you're looking at about $330 US roughly to build a Rook 2020. Um, 
So that's kind of uh, kits and pricing and things like that. Obviously the Rook uh, 2020 hasn't been out for as long as the V0. Um, hopefully there'll be kits coming out more and more and the price can go down a little bit. But that's kind of touching base on price for the two printers. Um, as far as building goes, the Rook is definitely an easier build. It uses, again, a standard 2020 extrusions. Um, it's much easier to build. There's less frame parts, you know, less that you have to get wrong, that type of thing. So if you're a beginner and you're definitely only focused on printing PLA, you just want to get your feet wet, that type of thing, the Rook 2020 is a better option. The V0 is a more complicated build, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's worse. It's just no going in that, you know, this is a pretty serious build. It's small, everything's really compact, and it uses small parts. So the build on this is more in depth and more complicated. So just know that going in when you're building a V0, it is a more complicated build. That definitely doesn't mean that a beginner can't build the V0. That just means that this is a more challenging build than a Rook. The Voron 0.2 is a ABS printer first. If your goal is to start printing up ABS right away, the V0 is the obvious choice between these two printers. Go ahead, buy yourself a V0 and build it. It is the ABS workhorse. It comes with acrylic panels. It's a great option. And if you want a printer this size, you know, that's a pretty easy choice. The, the Rook is primarily meant to print PLA. Um, generally out of the box, the Rook has better cooling for PLA because it's designed to print PLA. The printers are pretty close. Um, the, the Rook is only slightly better and it does depend on what tool head you're using um, on the Rook. But basically stock for stock, these printers, um, the, the Rook 2020 prints PLA better than the V0. And I know there are mods for the V0 for different tool heads and all sorts of things. I'm talking stock for stock because you can upgrade both printers with better cooling. Um, both printers do have quite a few mods. The V0 does have more. Um, it's, an, uh, it's been out for longer, but there are a lot of mods for the Rook 2020 printers on printables. I have an official mods collection on printables for the Rook 2020. You can use a Kirigami bed on the Rook. Um, there's, there's a couple mods that do carry over and, and you can make the Rook 2020 your own printer. So that's something to note too, and that's something very cool about the ecosystem of the Rook, is um, there are still very good mods out there, and you can make this printer your own. Uh, the Voron 0.2 has a really great manual. Um, there's a manual for the Rook, but there is not an official manual for the Rook 2020 yet. Um, you, some carryover... Um, does happen between the Rook. So the manual for the Rook uh, Mark I is still useful on the 2020, but there is not a dedicated manual like the Rook, uh, like the Voron 0.2 has. So that's kind of a, a, a overview, at least on the talking about the printers. Like I say, there is definitely a different in price that depends on where you live. Um, this is an ABS printer all day long. This is a PLA printer all day long. Um, I am going to actually start showing off some print quality uh, on both printers. What I did for my testing was I opened up Orca Slicer. I chose a Voron V0 profile in the slicer and I did not change a single thing. I used that slicer for the same slicer profile for both printers, untouched. I also used the exact same spool of filament. PLA for both printers. So I swapped this spool between the two printers because I wanted the absolute um, best comparison between the two. And of course, we are just doing a PLA comparison between the two printers. I think you'll see in the, the video uh, that I'm gonna show off, it's pretty hard to tell the difference between the two printers. They both print very, very well. 
So I wouldn't be too concerned if you're deciding based on print quality, especially on PLA print quality. They're basically the same. So if you had some um, reservations on that, if the Rook doesn't print as good a quality or something like that, that definitely is not the case. Now, I will say that this very heavily depends on the parts you choose for building the Rook 2020. It depends on your slicer profile. It depends on the tuning you do, and it depends on the material you, you're choosing to print. I, in my testing, I chose kind of what I would call a bit lower quality PLA, which is this JO. This is just some random JO PLA I bought off Amazon some time ago. Um, I did print out a different Benchy on the Rook with some nicer Sunlu Meta PLA. This is generally my favorite PLA to print with, is the Sunlu Meta PLA. I find it prints really well. I really like the colors and it's a nice filament uh, that's inexpensive to print with. So I will show that off too, just so if you wanted to see some differences. So I'm going to uh, cut then now to a video uh, comparing the two prints and uh, we'll go from there. All right. I'm gonna do my absolute best here to show off the print quality as best I can. And the first thing we're gonna take a look at is we're gonna take a look at a Cali Cat. So this is a really nice print to show off um, cooling, overhangs, that type of thing. This one in particular is the V0 print. So I have tuned pressure advance on this printer. And uh, as you can see, it printed very nice. You can see a little bit of cooling issues there on that one corner. But overall, very nice print quality on the CaliCat on the Voron 0.2. And here is the Rook print quality. Again, basically the same. I have not ran input shaping on the Rook. I just didn't have time to get a mount made for the Rook. So you will see very, very faint ringing. Um, you'll notice this back corner here, the cooling is a little bit better, certainly, but side by side, so this is the, uh, Rook 2020 on this side, and this is the Voron, like, honestly, there's, there's very, very little difference other, other than the ringing, and obviously my camera is going to, you know, make things even worse than they look. I'll even try and hold these up so you can see them a bit better side by side. So like I say, it's it's pretty similar in harsh lights. They kind of both have that little bit of bulging in the ears a little bit. There's the direct drive Rook and the Voron Zero comparison. So again, very, very comparable prints. So let's take a look at Benchies here. Um, so this is the direct drive Rook Benchy, and this is the Voron 0.2 Benchy. We'll, we'll do a quick look here, just off a of first glance. You can see they both kind of have that weird artifact. I do believe this is because of the filament. They both have a line there. So that is usually a filament issue. You can see here, um, again, very nice print, very good cooling on the Rook. No actual uh, real issues there. For the V0, again, very nice print. There is a little bit of cooling issues here on the V0 where the bow is just starting to warp a little bit. Again, I printed these at the same print temperature with the same spool of filament. And again, I'm gonna to try to uh, do my best here to do a one-handed comparison to show this off. But again, you can see here, this is the Rook. This is the Voron on the left. Other than input shaper, a little bit of ringing from input shaper, they're, they're really the, the same. So, that's about as good as I can show off for that. So here's the Voron Zero, and here is a Rook print with Sunlu Meta PLA. You can see 
It's definitely a, a bit nicer print. This color doesn't show off artifacts as good. I always like to use gray filament to show off artifacts. Um, I'm printing at a pretty low print temperature, 195 degrees. So I'm sure it could be upped a little bit to get rid of a few of the gaps and things like that there. But again, very, very capable printer. Um, on camera, these prints basically are all very, very similar. And in person, it's even harder to tell the difference, like I say. Lighting and um, color and that type of thing, it's, it's pretty hard to, to tell the difference. <laughs> there goes my Cali Cat, but you get the idea. Whichever printer you choose, they're both great options. Thanks again for watching.